Hi there. Welcome, everyone. Welcome back to Grounding Into Your Radiance on Transformation Talk Radio. I'm your host, Stacey Barber. I'm so honored to be here with you today. And I really want this to be a space where together we can dream, um, really explore what's coming up for you during our talks together and reconnect with your essential, authentic self and really really connecting back to the core of who you are and letting these conversations start to bring up topics that sometimes feel a little difficult to talk about or um, can open up some different views inside of your mind. So I just want you to sit back and enjoy. I'm here. I'm here to connect with you and I'm here to bring some really great conversation today. Um, today's episode's about the power of choice and what that means in our lives. And this is such a relevant topic for me personally, without the power and the ability to make sound choices in my life, I would not be sitting here today. And I look at this as like a human superpower, right? That, that with this ability to be able to choose one path or another, to be able to daily make those choices in our lives, we can really start to forge the path into the life that we truly want to create and what's available for us. Um, so again, I'm just so grateful to be here with you. I am a conscious mindset mentor and authentic life coach. And I really specifically love working with women, um, working with women who are really ready, ready to step into the next version of themselves, own their innate power and worth, and harness the power of choice, and really all of that to simply create more joy and freedom in their lives. I've done it in my life. I've seen it in the lives of my clients and my friends, and I really just am wanting to share the power and the message behind that today. So I would love to hear from you a few different ways to get in touch with me. Um, before we get started, my email is stacy.barber at gmail.com. My Instagram handle, where I'm most active, is Stacy Barber Coaching, and my website is stacybarber.com. Pop on over to either of those and just give me a shout out and let me know what you're thinking and what you'd like to hear more about from me and love to share whatever's relevant for you. So back to the topic today, the power of choice and really how the choices that we're making every day can either be changing our lives or keeping us stuck. And there is a profound quote from Viktor Frankl that I'm sure many of you have heard about. He is a Holocaust survivor. He went through the most immense pain in his life and has become a world-renowned author. Um, and in his books, he starts to really highlight what we're talking about today, talking about how we can embody and hold this power to be able to choose our reality, to choose the lens in which we look upon our lives. And the quote that really resonates so deeply with me right from his book, it is, Forces beyond our control can take away everything you possess, except one thing, your freedom to choose how you will respond to the situation. You cannot control what happens to you in life, but you can always control what you will feel and do about what happens to you, right? Really powerful. And to know this man's story of living in a concentration camp for years, watching many of his family members taken right before his eyes. Such a beautiful testament to the power of these words and the sincerity behind them. You cannot control what happens to you in life, but you can always control how you feel and what you do about what happens to you, taking back that driver's seat, right? Being in a state of action 
versus reaction. There's so much power behind the opportunity to step into that seat, to take full responsibility for ourselves and what our life looks like from one moment to the next. So let's dig a little bit deeper. And I just want you to think to yourself and consider in your life, in your past life, current life, wherever you are, are you in a space of intentional choice or do you at times find yourself on autopilot more times than not? I, I know for me, there are many times when I can feel myself going back to old rehearsed ways of being or reacting in relationship um, when things get tough, when I feel like things are not coming going my way. There are definitely moments when I have to sit in that space of what is coming up for me right now? And do I choose this? Do I choose this example of how I'm going to move forward for myself, for my daughters who are watching, for those around me who are watching? Or can I choose to move forward from a space of where I stand today, right? The power of choice. And as we think about it, as humans, we hold such an innate drive of within to like seek out experiences to expand and to grow and really illuminate where we are in the trajectory of, of our journey. And I know we've all heard the quote, if you aren't growing, you're dying. And I know that seems a bit harsh at times, but there's some, there's some really true depth to these words. Because if you think about it, when we aren't adapting, when we aren't changing and starting to shift and learning new ways to be and show up, we, we find a space of getting stuck and hasn't the last year really shown this to us. We were presented with something that many of us may never see again in our lives, something that we didn't see coming, something that has changed the way that we look at our lives and our sense of normal forever, the pandemic, the coronavirus, how everything was quote unquote normal. And then it was if overnight it just stopped. And isn't this such a great example of looking how have we chosen to move forward through this? What choices have we made in these times to be able to A, look at it as a space of learning, starting to shift, starting to adapt, starting to figure out what new normal looks like for us? Or I know there's some people in the world right now that are really hurting, figuring out what it is that I need to do to move forward, what it is that my next step looks like. And I know that can be a scary space. I've been there myself and I completely just send so much love and respect to anyone in that moment right now. And that and really harnessing the power of our minds and the power in which we choose to see the world, the lens, the window that we look through, what it is that we want to highlight. Are we focusing on things that are going right in life or are we focusing on things that are really troublesome right now? And where is our personal choice within that, right? And just being able to really come back to that childlike wonder and curiosity, really starting to see the world as our playground, right? And I've had so many clients that are in this space of in between right now. And what I've really tried to bring to them and what I'd like to bring to you is just considering that maybe we can look at this time as the slate being completely wiped clean, that we're getting a second chance to really look at what it is that brings us joy and happiness in our lives and what it is that we choose to do moving forward. And can this time be a catalyst for us stepping into a really beautiful version of ourselves and lives that we truly want to bring in and allowing just that, that, that childlike curiosity to come in, right? If, if you could say to anyone, if you could do anything in your life right now and know that the answer was not going to be no, that you were going to be successful no matter what, where would your heart lead you? And just staying in that space of letting that be the guide and seeing what might shift in your current realm in those moments. And I just want you to think about how we're moving forward, especially when we are faced with, with struggle or um, it really anything that's going on in the current realm. How are we choosing to show up for this? And I know that we've heard so many times from either ourselves or people that we love when they decide to choose to act or react to a certain situation in a way. And they, you know, they might say, it's just the way we are, or this is just the way we do things, or this is how we've always done it. 
um, we can say this in regards to the way we've always believed, the way we've always thought, the way we've always worshipped, right? And really starting to get clear on, is this mine or is this something that I have carried from my childhood or certain moments in my life to the current time? And taking this opportunity now to really get clear about what are my personal beliefs and values and how can I start to make my choices more in alignment with those, those particular, those thoughts. So when we're in that realm, I just want you to start to get clear about what are your personal values and beliefs? What do you stand for? What is your mission in the world? Why are you here and what do you believe? Why do we serve? Why do we give back? And what does it fall for anyway? And really allowing those questions to start to resonate and marinate inside and stir up some different, that those depths, right? This is what we're talking about. What we're talking about connecting to your essential self, really connecting to the core. Like we talked about in the last episode, connecting to the roots, finding out what your roots are and being able to shed the rest and really stand in clarity in what yours are today. Drop into your heart ask the questions, and then simply listen. The answers are already there. We just have to slow down and really take time to let them in. So before we go to break, I just want to bring a couple questions into the realm to consider. What does choice mean to you personally? What does that mean to you, the subject of choice? And are you embodying, really embodying the power that it holds and that it can offer And how can your relationship with choice begin to shift today? In this moment, during this conversation, what are some ways that we can begin to shift those thoughts? So we're gonna take a quick break. I'm excited to come back with you in a moment. We're gonna start to dive into intuition and gut feelings and what these mean in relationship to aligned choice. I'm really excited. Something I'm passionate about to bring to you in a moment. You're listening to Grounded Into Your Radiance. I'm Stacey Barber, and we'll be right back. Hi there. Welcome back. Welcome back to Grounding Into Your Radiance. I'm your host, Stacey Barber. So happy to be here with you. Um, I, I love these conversations. I love being able to talk about things that really matter, to bring up topics that are so relevant right now and really meet you where you're at. So that's my wish for our time together today and to really talk about what we've been discussing, the power of choice and what that looks like in your life. And before we went to break, I just wanted you to kind of consider and think about a few questions around what choice means to you and how you are embodying the power that that withholds. And if you can consider how your relationship with choice might begin to shift today. So I hope that started to resonate some things to bring up some topics and thoughts for you. I just wanna let you know how to get back in touch with me if you have any questions or anything you'd like to talk about further in around this topic or, or anything really. Um, my email is stacy.barber at gmail.com. Um, on Instagram, it's Stacy Barber Coaching. And my website is stacybarber.com. Feel free to reach out at any moment. I'd love to hear from you. So when we're thinking about choice making. When we're bringing this subject up, when we're thinking about each moment of our lives, how we have these these moments of possibility of when we can begin to look at one road or the other, one choice or the other, how do we know where to go? Like, how do we know which way is the right way? Because a lot of times we don't have directions, right? We find ourselves at this space of really the unknown, What is it that gets us one step closer to where we're supposed to be? For me and for so many people that I've worked with, that really comes in alignment with intuition and gut feelings, one and the same, right? Intuition, that feeling, that knowing, that dropping down within and like almost from your head to your toes is the way I like to describe it. And that gut feeling, literally the feeling in your gut or your heart or whatever that is for you, wherever your body is showing up, those feelings, how is it that we know when to listen? And I'd love to tell you a quick little story about when my father was in his last days here on earth. 
And I had been trained as an occupational therapy at the hospital and um, training here in, in Charleston. And I'd worked there for eight years. And so I was on the neuro floor. I was you know, transferring people in and out of wheelchairs. I was moving them in and out of bed. I was doing all the things that I had been trained to do. And we got the call that my dad was passing from cirrhosis and that he would be at home for at least a couple of weeks, um, living out his last days, um, in our childhood home. And I remember walking in and I remember just going to work, right? Like that knowing of I'm prepared. I know why I'm here. I know what I need to do. And I just started doing the things that I had been trained to do. And if you know anything about my story, um, this was not an easy thing. This person in my life, my, my dad, who had struggled with alcoholism his entire life, was probably one of the most difficult relationships of my life and continues to be. Um, but we had gotten to a really a great space of being able to forgive and love. And so I'm here caring for this man that had been such a, an interesting component of my life. And I felt so prepared and I felt so ready to be able to take on what was coming. And I kept myself busy in that, right. You know, changing the bed and getting him in and out and all the things. And I'll never forget standing at the side of his hospital bed. And what I didn't know is that he would pass the following day. And I just stood there looking at this man who had really lived such a troubled life, had struggled with addiction and depression and all the different things that come along with that. And he was leaving this world really alone because of how he had pushed away everyone in his life, which was a choice that he had made. And in that moment, it was as if God had dropped a little angel down on my shoulder and this crystal clear message came through that all of your training has prepared you for this moment, but now it's time. It's time to move on to the next stage of your life, the next phase, the thing that you are here to do. It is time to do the work that you have been brought to this world to do. And I remember arguing, <laughs> saying, what do you mean? I have insurance through my job. I have benefits through my job. This is what I went to school for. What's my husband going to say? My kids go to daycare through this hospital. How, how am I supposed to leave? And it was what I call deep intuition, deep intuitive knowing, like solid gut feeling of yes, and it's also time to leave. And I knew in that moment that I didn't have to know what the next step looked like, but I knew what I had to do. And I picked up the phone the next day and I called my boss and I said, I don't know exactly why, but I have to leave in a month. I'm going to give you a month and then I'm moving on. And if I could have known what I know now, if I could have seen how life opened up for me in those moments and those years to follow, it, it's such a clear testament to the power of this, to this power, the power of this notion of we have it all inside of us. We just have to listen. And when our gut starts talking, when our intuitive meter starts to go off, it's time to listen up, right? Because it's leading us in directions that we could never even imagine possible. And so I just want you to think about that like the I know there's a global understanding of getting a hunch or what your intuition is taking you towards but like really resonating in your life right like what does that mean to you what does having a gut feeling or an intuitive hint what does that bring up right and just sit with that and let that really sink in because the more that we bring the awareness and the power to that the stronger those urges get which is really beautiful so because I come from a science background, I'm also curious. I'm a very spiritual person, but I'm also science driven. So when I started looking at this topic, my question was, well, what does science say about gut feelings? I know I felt it and I know what it feels like in my body. And I've seen other people go through those moments. But what does it say about how we can make decisions in our life? And by no surprise, there's actually quite a bit of research around this topic. Um, and which for me really not only states that it's legitimate, but it's a sound and true compass for the decisions in our lives. And it's, I love watching how Eastern medicine and Western medicine continue to come together and how concepts that have been around for centuries are, are starting to make their way into, into our world, into our knowing, right? 
and starting to really bring those parts together. And so I like to think of this like our consciousness and our physical bodies, and we've all heard the mind body connection. They're really in direct communication with each other every moment of our day. And that's why this concept of gut feelings is so, so powerful to consider. And so I want you to think, what does it mean when our body is trying to communicate something to us? And how do we know that we can trust it when we're making really big decisions in our lives? Decisions like I was just talking about, decisions of leaving a career or making a huge move, stepping out into our dreams, moving from our family, our home. Like, how do we know? How do we know? And of course, I always love coming back. Deepak Chopra is just, he's one of the thought leaders on this topic. And he's such a sound, um, sound human, but just sound mind and all of this. And I was looking up some things about this in the research. And I love the way that he brought this. And it said, he says, if you say I have a gut feeling about whatever, such and such, you're not speaking metaphorically, you're speaking literally, because your gut makes the same chemicals that your brain makes when it thinks. So if you think about it, your gut makes the same chemicals that your brain makes when it thinks. So not only that, but your gut actually has its own nervous system. And that's amazing to me, which if you think about all the ways that we live in our minds, when we overthink how we have a nervous system system above, but then we also have it below. And I know we've always heard as above as below, really taking that literally. And something else about the nervous system in the gut, it, it does not have the ability to second guess itself like our central nervous system, our brain does. So when it comes in, it knows, it's leading us. It's really taking us in that direction moving forward. So it's speaking to our innate knowing. It's trying to communicate with us. And we should really listen up because these nudges, when we truly listen in and respect what's coming, they can be our greatest allies and gifts in life. And really thinking about that, thinking about the power of what we hold within our bodies, of how it's all an interconnected system, how it's always moving towards our greatest good, and how if we can start to step back into a space of surrender and trust and really start listening, what that starts to bring up, right? It's really, really beautiful. So just to consider, I want you guys to think about when have those gut feelings and intuition been your greatest ally in life? What are some really concrete examples that come up for you? And what does that, how does the idea of that mind body connection resonate with you in your personal life? Have you been able to connect with that? And if not, what are some ways that you can start to bring that back in, start to bring those topics back in, start to cultivate the feeling of that deeper knowing? So we're going to take a quick break. I want you to just consider those questions while we're away. And when we come back, I really want to answer the question of how do I know I can trust my gut and will it lead me astray or will we keep me on the right track and really starting to dig into those concepts. So again, you're listening to Grounding Into Your Radiance. I'm Stacey Barber, and we'll see you when we get right back. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Grounding Into Your Radiance. I'm your host, Stacey Barber. So happy that you're here with me today and just really digging into such a potent topic around the power of choice and what that means in our lives and how it can really be a catalyst to stepping into the next version of ourselves, really using it as such a powerful tool to take us from where we are today and move us towards the direction that we're really desiring to go. So I'm excited to dig in. I want to let you know how to get in touch with me. Um, my email is stacy.barber at gmail.com. My website is stacybarber.com and you can find me on Instagram at Stacy Barber coaching. Um, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how these topics are resonating with you, what's coming up for you, and if there's any way that I can support you. So before we went on break, I just kind of posed the questions around where have gut feelings and the idea of intuition 
been your greatest ally in life? And how can you start to really recall those memories and bring those back to your awareness? And also, how does the idea of the mind-body connection resonate with you in your personal life? The idea of our nervous system in the brain and the upper quadrant of our body and then the nervous system in our gut right? That they're both such relevant um, components and how they communicate with one another so deeply. And this really resonates so deeply with me and the work that I do every day at the Pilates studio that my husband and I, um, we own, we bought about three and a half years ago and really getting people to connect with that, really letting them slow down as they walk into the door. We just encourage them to slow down, allow their minds to rest and just to be, just to be in their bodies, just to allow themselves to experience whatever's coming up, to have a safe space to land. And as they begin to move their bodies, starting to let that connection, that that duality within become whole and become one. And it's so miraculous to sit back and watch. You can watch a client that comes in their very first time and they're nervous and all the feelings of, I don't know if I can do this and that self-doubt that tends to creep in. And then you pick up and you come a year later and they walk in with this knowing that this is such good medicine for my body and my soul. And I know what I'm doing and I can feel the connections getting stronger. And when they're not there, they miss it. And to be able to be witness to that and to share in those moments it's so gratifying and it is such powerful work that is is exactly what I feel most of us need in our lives in these moments, right? In these moments of where we tend to look outward, when we tend to look for answers outside of ourselves, how we can we bring ourselves back in? How can we start to increase the power of these connections, right? And really starting to allow that to solidify and get stronger. And it's like any muscle, right? In our body, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. And the more it's easy to just pick up and come right back to it. So again, really bringing in these concrete examples helps me see these these concepts in real life. So I hope that's helpful for you as well. Um, So around these topics, right? You might be asking yourself, how can I really trust my gut? Like how, how do I know that it's always leading me in the right direction? And is there, you know, is there a time when, when that, that truth isn't present? And what I tend to look at, what I've been seeing in my life and all the people that I've observed is that when we are able to what I call the power of social proof, right? And this is what I've been asking you to do. Proof that we have experienced this in our own lives or we've witnessed it in others' lives. And that really helps solidify the truth behind this notion of gut feeling and intuition and really sitting in that, right? And when I start to think back, and allow myself to consider how all the times my gut has led me in the right direction. I, I, I have to step back in a deep sense of awe and, and wonder because I can see how life was creating the path for me. And all I had to do was start to listen. And things that come to mind, um, the very first time I saw my husband, it was in high school, it was my freshman year. And he had a locker right beside of mine. And I remember opening my locker door and looking over and I see these like beautiful green eyes. And I just knew that there was something different about him. And I look back and I thank goodness that we like, we didn't date in high school because I don't think we would be where we are today, but that knowing, right. And you might call it butterflies, but I'd never felt that same feeling with anyone else. And I remember going home and saying to my mom, I met this guy, but I don't know what this means. And we ended up dating 10 years later, but coming back to that, like my body was telling me something about this person in front of me. I also think about when I decided that I wanted to study occupational therapy and I considered a few different options, but then my gut said only apply here only apply to one graduate program, which that usually sounds absurd. And most people want to get different opportunities, but it was like, only apply to the one in Charleston. And I did, I put all my eggs in one basket and I just let go and trust and surrender. 
And then I got accepted. And I think about those moments. I think about that ability to be able to just step away and say, okay, I'm listening, right? The story I was just sharing when I knew that I had to quit my professional career to pursue my dreams and what that really looked like. And it really, it really makes it so clear for me that when the universe speaks, that's when I need to listen. And that's when we all need to listen, right? It's, it's, it's bringing this information to us for a reason. And it's really leading us. It's dropping those little pellets for us to, right, to, to follow, little stepping stones along the way. And I think some of the most profound ways that I think about this topic in my mind and in the world in which we live that I think can be really relevant for everyone is what comes to me is 9-11. And the tragedy of that day. And then as, as time started to pass, we started to hear stories of people waking up that morning and simply feeling like they shouldn't go to work that day. They didn't feel sick. They, they could have easily gone in, but there was something telling them today you need to stay home or how others got stuck in traffic on their way to work. And they stayed home with their children or there's so there's countless stories. Right. And because of that, they weren't in the building when the horrific act was carried out. They they were able to survive that. And if we think about that in such a that, that for me, that makes it so real. I'll never forget seeing that. Uh, that image on TV and then learning about these stories. And I had to just sit in that moment of, wow, you know, there, there's real power in this. There's a reason these things were coming through for these people. And what does that mean? And what does that mean for me? And how can I start to really strengthen that muscle inside myself? Um, and as a mother, any of the moms out there, I'm sure you can understand and resonate deeply. The day I became a mother, it was like, <laughs> God handed me this extra dose of intuition and I can see my daughters walking in from school. I can see them coming down the steps and I can see I, there's this like intuitive knowing of they had a really beautiful day or something's going on. Right. And it's so profound to just listen to that and let that be my guide. Let it start to lead me into that connection with them. Let me start to show up in that. I can see some something was going on with them and really, really sitting in that and trusting that. And I want you to really like allow this to ingrain in your mind as a truth that we intuitively begin to believe and that we can trust in the power of this, because as we do so, then we allow more opportunities to come in as we hold the vibration of this, the vibration of trust and faith and surrender and the power of our choices and the power of our moment to moments, then we really begin to shift the inner dialogue, we begin to shift the outer vibration, which if anyone's familiar with the law of attraction, we begin to bring that back in. We begin to allow that to come back into our lives, right? And I just finished up a training last week, which I'm so excited to bring more topics around this with you guys around NLP and hypnosis and time techniques and emotional freedom techniques. And one of the biggest topics that came up that resonated so deeply with me around this idea is the question, how are we at cause for our lives? How are we at cause for our experience? How can we shift from that space of victim or projecting outward blame or, or whatever it is that's happening? How can we come back into a space of taking hundred percent responsibility for what it is that's going on in our lives. How can we sit in that space of really thinking as cause is much greater than effect that I am in control of what it is that's moving forward inside of me and outside of me each and every day. And I just want to sit with that for a moment. How are we at cause? How can we choose to begin our days? What is it that we choose to do the moment that we wake up? Is it that we jump on our phone? Is it that we jump out of the bed and rush down to the shower? Is it that we take a moment and have a prayer of gratitude? Is it that we move our bodies and meditate? 
how are those choices, the way that we begin our day, how they can so deeply affect the, the way in which the rest of our day moves from that point on and really harness the power of that. And also thinking about what is it that, how is it that I end my day? Am I exhausted and I you know, find myself just falling into bed or can I take space to really cultivate all the beautiful things that happen in this day, bring them to my current awareness. Again, sit in a space of gratitude and calling in the power of our intuition, calling in the power of our choice and how that allows us to start to show up in the world the way that we really choose to. And those little moments, right? All of those moments add up to the big experience in which we call life. So really sitting with that, letting yourself feel the power of that, really contemplating on what is it that that I'm choosing for myself? How am I choosing to begin and end my days? How can I start to zoom out to see that each day builds to a week, to a month, to a year, which then becomes our lives, right? And allowing that to exhilarate and excite because there's so much there that we can work with, right? Going back to our first episode, the potter and the clay, how can we start to mold the life that we really choose and love? So I'm excited to bring you guys more. We're going to take a quick break, but I really want you to start to sit with the question of, where can I think of these ideas of social proof of this showing up in my life or in lives of others that you know? And can you sit in a moment of reflection and allow deep appreciation for these gut feelings and intuition to sink in? Sitting in that space, practicing, choosing to practice gratitude in this moment, letting that sink in. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to shed light on some key concrete concepts to consider as you begin harnessing the power of choice in your life and how that decision can change everything from this point forward. You're listening to Grounding Into Your Radiance. I'm Stacey Barber, and we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Welcome back to Grounded Into Your Radiance. I'm Stacey Barber. I'll be your host. And I'm so excited to continue this really important conversation with you today around the power of choice and how that power can begin to harness a completely different experience in your life and in the lives around you. And um, I really just want you to continue to consider the topics that we were talking about before break around what I consider social proof where have we witnessed or where have we experienced in our own lives or others this topic of intuition and gut feelings? How can we start to solidify that in our mind and really bring that in as truth for ourselves? And then also allowing and today to begin a practice around appreciation for those moments, appreciation for those gut feelings and appreciation for that intuition, really sitting in that space. And I want you to know that you can reach out to me at any moment. I'm so excited to hear from anyone and everyone. Um, ways to get in touch with me. My Instagram is Stacy Barber Coaching. My email is stacy.barber at gmail.com. And my website is stacybarber.com. And that's Stacy with an IE. So I'd love to hear from you. And um, as we continue moving together on this journey, let me know what you would love to hear about. Love to bring these topics that are really relevant to you here together. So we were talking about before we went on break, how, how we can begin to step into more intentional choice and thus what I consider stepping back into the driver's seat of our lives rather than being on autopilot. How can we step into that space of intentional choice? And no pun intended, it simply comes down to that space of we have to make a choice. We have to make the choice to be in a space of intentional choice. And as we discussed a bit, being 100% at cause, 100% at cause for ourselves, for our decisions, for what's showing up and what that looks like moving forward in our lives, cause being greater than effect, and really deliberately making the decision to stay aligned with our intentional choices. We brought this up a little bit before, but I really want to bring you some, some things to consider talking about Am I moving from a space of 
of my personal beliefs, values, identity from a space of where I am today? Or are these ideas and topics and feelings, things that I have brought with me along the way? And not that one is better than the other, not that one is right or wrong, However, a lot of times, and I can feel this in my life so often, we can come into that space of doing things just because they're familiar or making choices that feel comfortable. And we end up, as I think it was Albert Einstein, of the definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over, but then expecting a different result, right? So if we can see that things are going in a certain way in our lives and continue to stay in that space, without changing and we're desiring a change, how is it that we can bring in this idea of intentional choice to start to move out of that, out of that spiral, right? And start to forge the path forward. So when I think about this, when I think about the power in choice and really creating intentional choice, I want you to think about we need to evaluate the choices at hand, really, and ask, are these aligned with my values and beliefs, or are these from uh, old condition beliefs and values, ways in which my family did things, or are these mine? And really being able to choose the ones that we want to bring forward and let the rest release. And then really being honest about that and gentle with ourselves, because from age zero to seven, our little bodies are sponges walking around and everything that's happening around us, we take on as ours. We see the way in which people react with one another in relationship and we take that on as ours. And we literally take in everything that's going around on around us without conscious awareness. And then at the age of around eight, that starts to solidify into our bodies and minds. And so from that space, everything that we were, you know, sponging up before becomes ingrained as our truth until we decide if that's ours or not. And this is what I'm speaking of around the power of bringing this idea of asking, is this mine or is this something that no longer serves me and being okay with releasing that, right? And then what am I being taught here? And how am I being informed and where do I go from here? I, I think about this a lot in regards to my story. And a lot of people could listen to my story and see all the hardship and things that didn't really go my way or things that I really had to, to climb out of the depths from. But I choose to look at all of those moments as lessons, learning lessons in my life. I love to be able to say, yes, this is part of who I am and it always will be. And I'm really in a space of gratitude of that in my life now. But how can I see what life presented me and learn from that and be able to grow and expand into the person that I choose to be versus completely identifying or seeing stuck in that, right? What is it that I'm being taught? How am I being informed and where do I go from here? And stand in the truth of knowing that we are always in a process of co-creation with the universe or whatever higher power or source that you choose to believe in. And that where our focus goes, our energy flows, right? Where we focus our energy, where we decide to take our viewpoint and the lens in which we are looking at our lives, that's where our energy goes. So we have the power to zoom out and say, I really want to, I really want to succeed here. Or I want to strive for this, or I want to be able to expand in this way. I'm going to focus my energy here. And we feel this momentum, right? Coming beneath us that really pushes us towards that, which is such a beautiful concept that we're, we're never in this alone. And really asking, you know, for me, where am I meant to show up? How am I meant to serve and be accountable for my choices in this moment in time? And what does that mean for me? moving forward. And there's just so much power to that. I'm so grateful that I was introduced to this concept because without this truth in my life, I can't imagine where I would be today. I can't imagine how I would have allowed all of the things that, that, that were happening in my life and that I felt like speed bumps would have tripped me up over and over again. And I remember being at that space from the depths of what I consider, you know, in the depths of my life and really being able to harness the power of, I get to choose what my next day looks like. I get to choose what my next 
my next experience looks like. And I am able to really strengthen that in my life moving forward, right? And as I think about this, as I think about the way in which we show up in the world, um, I've described this sometimes as, can we be on the beach? Can we be on the shoreline with our feet planted in the sand? We feel the wind, we feel the water coming up over our feet, but we know that we're so grounded, right? This is grounding into your radiance, grounding down, knowing that there's a stable surface beneath us. And then I also want you to visualize the buoy that's out in the ocean, that each wave that comes up, it gets knocked over a little bit more, the wind comes, it goes here and there. And each and everything that's happening in the external world is really moving it side to side here and there. And it has no idea where it really is meant to be. And can you think about how each of these can be examples of where we choose to be in our life, how we choose to allow what's coming around us in, or can we stay in that space of being truly grounded, truly grounded in our knowing, truly grounded in in what it is that we're here to do and what we want moving forward. So before we finish up today, I want to share one of my favorite stories about choice. And it's the story of the angry young man and the Buddha. So if you've heard this, just listen in. It's a really great example of the power of choosing. So one day there was a Buddha walking through a village and he saw a very angry and rude young man. And the young man came up and he began insulting the Buddha, saying all kinds of awful, rude words. And the Buddha was not upset by these insults. Um, and instead, he asked the young man, so tell me, if you buy a gift for someone and that person op- or does not take it, who does the gift belong to? And the young man was surprised to be asked such a strange question. And he said, well, I guess it would belong to me because I bought the gift. And the Buddha smiled and he said, that's correct. And that is exactly the same with your anger. If you become angry with me and I do not get insulted, then the anger falls back on you. You are then the only one who becomes unhappy, not me. And all you've done is hurt yourself. Choosing to stay grounded in your radiance, choosing to stay solid in your knowing, choosing to connect with your intuition and your gut feeling, making those choices each and every day will begin to change your life. So I want you to think and resonate on the power of choice, the power of choosing what belongs to us and simply what doesn't, and the power of creating your own destiny, one choice, one day, one moment at a time. Again, I love this topic. I love sharing this with you guys. I want you to know there's so much power in choices and that that I hope this really helps move you forward in your life. Thank you so much for listening. It's been such an honor to be here with you. I hope to see you in a couple of weeks for our next episode. This is Grounding Into Your Radiance. I'm Stacy Barber. And until next time, take care and stay open, my friends.